Okay, good evening and welcome to this evening's Board of Educa Crestwood Board of Education study session. Um, Monday, April 4th, 2022. I call this meeting to order at 5.30. Mr. Noon, please take call. Roll. Mrs. Berry. Here. Mr. Radoon. Here. Mrs. Elzayat. Here. Mrs. Fawaz. Here. Myself. Ms. Kaminsky. Here. Mr. Saba. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Okay. Um, we, we uh, would like to go into, if you can make the motion, Sue, um, and to... Uh, motion to go into closed session for legal opinion. For legal opinion. Support. We have a motion from Ms. Um, Kaminsky, supported by Mr. Baydoun, that we go into closed session for legal opinion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Uh, if I can have a motion to come back into uh, open session, please. So moved. We have a motion from Ms. Kaminsky, supported by Support. Mr. Sabal, that we come back out of closed session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I know that there were some questions that board members had. Um, Mr. Sabal, did you want to start? Did you have any questions? No, about I. I, I the question about um, the you know bidding out the uh, for the property is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I mean, we can't. I mean, we can only you know we really can't talk too much about it. But um, I mean, we can discuss it openly. Well, openly. sure. I mean, if if this board decides that we're going to proceed and, and look at options for the property on Inkster, uh, I think the question had come up previously as to uh, you know the process for listing and you know I don't know how that works from a bidding perspective from realtors I think Najah you have a different perspective since you're in the industry but I, looking for your your insight because of your professional knowledge that's no I just think when you had mentioned or when it was mentioned about bidding and that it wasn't possible I think when we first discussed listing it I think my question was before we knew well, before anybody presented to the board, was that what percentage of commission would that person be asking for? So are we doing a standard? Are there allowances for concessions on that? I mean, is that legal? I don't know. I'm, you I'm could, a percent, as percentage-wise, I can, can always... Can somebody do a pro bono and say, I don't want anything? Of course. Okay. So, long as, so long as the broker agrees, which typically the broker doesn't really hold your hand you know, to the fire for anything. I mean, you're, there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, and if you're a top agent as well, a lot of times you have a little more flexibility in what your commission is. I'm, I was just wondering, was that even, was it a discussion with any of the agents or whoever was spoken to we, about, or? We haven't had uh, the chance really because. It, chance. It, was it a conversation? No. Just to be clear, you're, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Vice President Kaminsky, just to be clear, no conversations were had with any brokers or any realtors in terms of the sale of the property. All that was in discussion was the uh, someone, we had a respectful person come in and give us uh, on their own time, just a breakdown of the property, but there has been no conversation with any real estate agent to sell the property. Okay, and I wasn't insinuating I know you're not, but I'm, I'm just, making that clear okay. for the public. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to see three different appraisals for the property to see what people think that it should be go the value route. of it because I'm concerned and I have no clue what property would or be would not be worth. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is just for the record, I did not call that one person and tell them to be here. I did receive two phone calls of people saying that they would be here, and I have heard that one of those two people was making calls to people in the area. Okay, thank you. That was it. That. So I don't think that we should list it with an agent. I think that we, the school Well, board, we haven't gotten to the point of if we're going to list it or not. I'm saying if yeah, we decide if we to decide, list it, okay. mm -hmm. I don't think that we need a real estate agent. I, I believe um, that 
you know, anybody who's going to come in and do something with that property probably already has their eye on it and they probably already know what they want to do with it. If And if that's the case, my suggestion is let's list it for 45, let's agree how many days, for 45 to 60 days, um, let's list the property ourselves. Okay. Can we legally do can we? Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know about you, the of that. yeah, we can. I'm saying as a school district, I don't know if there's yes. 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 Yeah, we can. You can. And we can advertise it on our um, at our meetings, we can advertise it on our website, you know, we can post it on Facebook. This property is for sale, this is what we're looking for. Um, you know. But may, may I address something? That sure, go ahead. Sue said, go ahead. Uh, three appraisals is three different costs for the district. So. Yeah, but without having somebody who has more knowledge than I do, I get it. I can't say that that property is worth one dollar or one million or ten million, and I am not comfortable coming up with a price just arbitrarily without having an understanding. I will tell you that I looked a lot at properties that are for sale, and just individual forty by hundred lots in Dearborn Heights are going from 99,000 and up. You know, so if we divide 17 acres by that amount, is that what we're gonna get? No, but I'm not comfortable coming up with a price. At least I am not. I, I okay, Mrs. Sajanu, go ahead. In all fairness, desktop appraisals aren't that much money, especially on, an, on a vacant piece of um, land. I mean, you're talking between three of them, if, if you said each one was 500. I don't think she was talking about a desktop appraisal. I think well, it she would was be because you're not going into the well, desktop. Base, basically, basically, a desktop appraisal is just that you're not going into the home. Comparisons. Yeah, you're looking up comparisons. You're not yeah. entering a property. So, it Ms. Elvia, would be. A, it, I'm sorry, don't. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. My thing is, even if we do one appraisal, I know that the process in appraising is to bring three. They bring three compar provide comparable, three comparable properties. Comparable, yeah. Um, properties. You know, properties. Right. I'm just saying one appraisal for me would That's suffice true. because I know that they bring comparables, enough comparables. But there's nothing to compare it to in the city well, except we don't Hold know on, that. Sue, we have, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Solo wanted to speak, go ahead. So Solo. just in response also to the appraisals, um, honestly, I think the one is enough and a property is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it, whether it's small or large, you find a buyer, you know, if we decide to go that route and I mean, the realtor, part of their job, if we go that route, is to do the comparables, is to take care of us, is to do all of those things. That's, I mean, that's what they're doing. We're not the professionals in selling property. That's, uh, I mean, I would feel better just having the realtor take care of it if that's the route we go. So, if the, I, as a realtor would go in and say, okay, well, I'm gonna pull comparables to give an idea of what we should list the property for. But at the same time, that person, if they, if they were getting obtaining a loan, would then still have to have an appraisal done on the property to, to say, is it worth, is it really truly worth this much? Obviously, you know, it could be worth more, but at that point, it would mean nothing to us as a district if it appraised for more than that. So getting the appraisal, obtaining an appraisal prior to listing it, I think if, as Danielle's saying, you didn't choose to use an agent, then I think you would want to do, obtain a, an appraisal from an outside or third party. But, okay. Mr. Bacon. So in our previous uh, closed session or study session, I should say, this was, you know, we talked about this, but when we look at comparables, right? I believe that's public knowledge, right? So when you pull comparables, that's public knowledge. Anybody can pull a comparable, mm -hmm. correct? So if we're gonna pay for an appraisal that's gonna have three comparables in it, depending on how much it costs, I'm okay with it. But then going back, I think our best bet is to reinforce what Selma said was, using a real estate agent and then maybe discussing the fee because Najah said there's no legal right rules against what they can charge or whatever. Um, in my personal opinion, I think using someone with knowledge that has done it before, that can handle the overflow. Um, if we do list it ourselves, I understand, I'm okay with that too, but is there gonna be a private inbox? Who's gonna manage that inbox? I think we're getting into now, um, 
I think we can actually expose ourselves and the district legally if we listed ourselves because of how the quotes will come in and how we deal with them ourselves. So, so that's okay, my please. next question. Are we, if we have, no matter whether we have an agent or not, are we having our legal team look over the legal documents? Which Absolutely. Anybody would. 100%. Your agent, your attorney is going to look. Right. So there true. are attorneys that handle sales as well. True. So are we double? No, Truon is our, all of the legal documentation will go through Truon. So even if we have an agent handling the documents, it's still going to go through the attorney. It will, but we, we, we would have to find out how much they're going to charge us to do all that. Because they're, if they're just right. reviewing the documentation to make sure everything's copacetic, it's different than them helping us list it and sell well, it. Well, they wouldn't be helping us list it. I'm saying, way. but going through the entire sale process. But we're ta if you look at, if if let's just say I threw, we threw a number out there and the, the average percentage for. Well, I wouldn't talk about percentages right now in open session. I'm just saying average percentage. Right. No, no, I'm, yeah. I'm just guys, saying. I'm not talking about any in particular, any, I'm not talking about a particular agent. I'm not talking about a particular. No, no, I know. I'm just, any property. I'm just saying that for, just so that nobody goes down that route in open session. What I'm, all. okay. I'm just if anybody has any knowledge in real estate and you look at what you, if you were to sell your own home or a piece of property, there is a going rate. And if you take that percentage and multiply it by the sale of the property, you're talking about a significant amount of money. Um, so I'm just saying what the rate would be for our, an attorney fee as opposed to listing it with an agent. And I'm not opposed to listing it with an agent. I'm just, we haven't even... We're if we did yet. that, yeah. not I'm not opposed yet. to it. I'm just saying there are things that we have to consider because it, at, the bottom, at the end of the day, it affects our bottom line. Well, these are all thoughts. At the end of the day, it's more money that can go into the field. Sorry. So, or whatever we do with it. If we decide to do this. If it's decided, exactly. I, I mean, if we're, are we even discussing That's my that? I mean, so if, yeah. your, your discussion right now is, is a valid discussion because the board's going to make a decision later during the regular session. So once okay. you make that decision, this discussion, if it goes, you know what the decision is, based on the direction of the decision, this discussion then is where we, or you know, I working through the board will make a determination on what is the best and we can get cost structure or different processes. Because understand the only piece that has to be voted on is whether or not we would like to or not to put the property for sale. And then the other piece that is voted upon is at the time an offer comes in, if the board chooses to accept or to decline. Hold on, Can I? wait, I wanna make sure that that's correct because my understanding um, legally is that we are responsible for property sales. We are responsible um, for contracts and Remind me of the third thing that I can't even think of right now. But I think I, I would I would want us to be like open about this with the board. Well, no, where... that's but that's exactly what I just said. Okay. He's the saying board that's what action. Okay. Would take. Yeah, those are the actions you take as a board. It's not that anything happens without the board's knowledge. Okay. There's only three things that the board would vote on once the board makes a determination. If the board determines the vote to sell, okay, then the next thing that the board would vote on is. Um, if the board chooses to go with a real estate agent and chooses to put it up for bid, they would vote on that. Okay. And then the third thing the board would vote on is a final offer. But if the board chooses not to go with the sale, then it's a dead deal. We move on. Okay. Ms. Kaminsky, go ahead. Um, and I think to clarify what Naja was trying to say and tell me if I'm wrong, without using the property as an example, when I bought my house, the realtor who represented me was a friend. The realtor did not charge the the going percentage. And the only percentage that we had to pay was to the realtor of the buyer. So there was a discount given because I was friends with the realtor. And what my interpretation of what Nadja was trying to say is, we should try and find a realtor who's willing to give a discount on whatever that going percentage is. Is that correct? We're yes. allowed to do that. We were just well, the purchaser doesn't pay. You, you as a bu buying a house, wouldn't pay the percentage. 
when you no, bought your the home. Seller. Oh, the seller. The seller is what she. The seller. Said. The seller pays yeah. it. She said when she bought her home, her friend. Is that what you said? Yes, but so you wouldn't pay it. The seller would have paid it, not you. Oh, that's true. But <laughs> yeah. he didn't charge. Well, yeah, you don't get yeah. charged the, unless the, he cut it. There's what. Yeah. yeah he Regardless. Cut it. They, okay. I got. So okay, can Go I on. just ask? Um, I know, like, there's a lot of this information that. I mean, I know we kind of touched on it in the, you know, the last, during the last um, meeting, um, but I'm looking because I know it's, it's saying that a healthy percentage for a fund balance is 20% or higher. I was under the impression that a healthy fund balance was 15. Is what we were. No. I thought it was 20. No. Healthy fund balance is 18 to 20%. We want to stay at, we consider 20% as being a very healthy fund balance. Okay. Have we looked at any other possibilities or options for uh, doing this? So, can, there's only one other option, and this is my professional opinion. People can disagree. What is a bond or a sinking fund millage? That's the only other option. I, I know. I, this, I'm sorry. So uh, my, I guess my biggest concern, and I know I said this before, and I know not everybody, we're not all on the same page, which is fine, is letting go of of land in the city that we will never get back and i'm i'm afraid that in five to six years debating it now are we debating this now do are we not no okay yeah i just wanted That's to ask fine. something else real quick to add a third facet to this go ahead if we decide we're going to sell it and we decide we're going to list it we need to vote on that do you also want to have a vote on how we proceed from there whether we go with a realtor or we do it ourselves. Because I think what we're saying right now is what we decide is we're going to sell it. Dr. Masalam, do what you do. Mm. Right, but what she's saying, what no, she's saying, I, don't, I know exactly, to I don't understand. <clears throat> but she also has a valid point in asking the questions if there's any other alternatives that we can look at. Um, I, I'm, I'm not questioning. No, I know right, she's, got, she's, she's got a point right, her so questions. But I think right now what we're talking about is just the process, the process, the process more so this. than the project so itself. So you could, you could discuss that during. Yeah, I mean that's something I I would hope you bring during, up during yeah, yeah during yeah. the start, the uh, comment right. right. Yes, Mr. Bedin. Question goes to Dr. Masala. Is this the first, or even maybe you and Sue would probably know best? Is this the first piece of real estate we buy or sell as a district? No, yeah. the board what, office. Oh, no, 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 the board office. No, the board. So, why is I'm not understanding why because this is so on, are we debating? so much different? <laughs> we're not, no, 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 we're not debating because what had happened when the property when the board office was bought, it went directly through Plant Moran. I don't. Yeah. Know. Did we yeah. Add, did we ask Plant Moran for a discount? Um. Did we ask for? Uh, My point is. I mean, these are, these not only steps. was there not a discount, but you well, know how much we money probably it costed. Paid, but do we, we want to go there? No, no, well? the, the property didn't cost. It was the renovating that, that ended so, up costing. So my point which, is that we buy and sell assets. If you look at the course of the district history, there's been multiple purchases and sells, right? We have this is the first that we've sold. This is the first uh, since I've been on the board. Right. As, as a sold. Okay. Yeah. As there a was sell. no Sorry. discount to be given when right. Plant Moran did it because we were purchasing. But when we buy, did we did we go through a different process? To me, buying or selling is... How do you ask no, for a discount? No, you, you don't ask for a discount when you're buying. Why? Because we weren't paying the, the commission. We were buying. But technically, there was a commission. Seller. Yeah, but that had nothing to do it with it. It referenced Sue's it, question it has, on, well, on when she bought her sold. house. Same thing. Sue's, no. <laughs> but no, I, I spoke incorrectly. The, the realtor did not charge his 3% commission right. at all to the buyer, to I'm the seller. My, my point is, we're so putting a lot of so attention on something that. We're not even there yet. Exactly. We're not even Thank there you. yet. Mr. Sabal, go Just ahead. Just one last point. Maybe Thank this you. is something you can find somewhere in the dusty old binders somewhere. When we sold the building on Haas years and years ago, uh, that is now another charter school, how was that handled? I will ask <laughs> Kristen and I will <laughs> dig into the archives. Sorry, Kristen. Kristen. were you here? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. no that was. So. 
You got to find a roaming dinosaur. Hold on a second. Did we? Own, it was Fairline Christian, but did we own it at the time? Yeah, we, we owned it. Okay, okay, that was before my time. That was way before my time. Christian, we're talking twenty five plus. Years uh, there's ago. a reason I asked that. Christian, and I, I, I agree yeah. with what we'll Mr. Hayden was saying tomorrow. in the context of asking people to do things for pro bono. I get it. And nobody's saying that we should yeah. or should not. I'm just saying if we decide to go down that path, which we can talk about later. Right. But I just wanted to see if we had something there. If, by the way, please don't go roaming through the books. I was just, <laughs> if you see it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll see what we can find. So, can I one more thing? One more thing. Go My ahead. initial thought process on that, again, before it was ever even brought, before anybody ever presented, was maybe we could find somebody that was willing to do that because there are several people who have children in the district or we i think we all know an agent or two or three or four or ten if i you know and i wasn't sure if that was part of the conversation before it was ever brought to us so that's why it was initially brought up I think, sure. hey, if we could, in, in it, that person on their own decided, but I'm not even saying that it was a must, but I also like Danielle's idea, so I think that there's options, and if that is the route that we take, then there are things that we can look into or consider. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to move on. I've got okay. to introduce our next sure. presenters. All right, so I'd like to turn it over to Andrea, who will invite the team up to present a data piece. Two reasons, one, because we want to keep up the speed, but number two, this is also a state requirement that we have to present this at least once a year. So Andrea, do you want to invite the team? So they're not here because they want You're going to have to step up to the microphone, Andrea. Where's Andrea's mic? You don't mic? have a microphone in front of you, do you? <laughs> Sorry. TV. <laughs> so our strategic team, um, Zainab Jawad Bedoun, Rod Winawada, and Joel Fabris will be presenting. Thank you. It's a lot of work for just that. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. As many times I've been here, this is still very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, the district strategic team has been working on lots of compliance pieces, and this is one of the pieces that because of COVID-19 and the alignment of return to school and ensuring that we have a district assessment, uh, the 98B legislation was given to us in the beginning of the fall, uh, and we had to set a district goal, including well, uh, building level goals. Mr. Awada is joining us virtually. You want to click, Mr. Awada? So the 98B requirement in the summary is that every student in the district take a district assessment, which for us is the iReady assessment, and that assessment would be given at beginning, middle, and end. The 98 compliance piece has to be posted on our website with the beginning and middle of year scores only, but we will be adding the end of year scores because it gives us a better data story and a better understanding of where our kids are truly are at the end of the school year. Um, I'm not gonna read off the screen. I'm sure you've all had a copy already, so Mr. Roddy, you can go to the next one. Our district goal is that all students below grade level will meet their typical growth. Now, typical growth is, has a different explanation than what we would typically look at. Um, what does typical growth actually mean? Go ahead, Mr. Owada, next one. Oh, next one. There you go. So typical growth means the average annual growth of students at each grade and placement level. I'm sorry, I can't read off the screen. I apologize. Typical growth allows us to see how our students are doing in comparison to all other students at their grade level in our district as well as at the state level and across. We can go through the Michigan Data Hub to look at how their growth meets what the growth looks like for other students here in Michigan. I'm sorry, can I, can I just ask a question? Sure. Can, can you just walk us through how we get to get through the I ready? You are gonna get there. Okay. That's where I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Awada right now, actually, Ms. Ferry. And he actually is going to walk you through the platform which you don't see in your packet because we can't 
okay. give you those links to get in, but he's going to show you how, what the measurements look like by grade level. So I'm gonna let Mr. Obata take over. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One more question too. When you say um, compare, comparing them, are you comparing like nearby districts uh, all over Michigan or specific ones? So at first we look at all of our students, let's say at first grade across our district, then we look at all of the students across the state because we're able to do that through the Michigan Data Hub and how the data is now uploaded into one one uh, platform, we're able to do that comparison. We're, we are required to look at our students and look at their growth and ensure that our students are showing growth in that area, in, in reading and math. Okay. All right, Mr. Wada, you're up. Okay, I uh, just want to say good evening, uh, President Barry, uh, Vice President Kamensky, Treasurer Ms. Uh, El Ziyad, Secretary Ms. Janoon, Trustee Ms. Fawaz, Trustee Mr. Yuseba, and Trustee Mr. Baydoun, Dr. Masalam, Dr. Lazar, Penny, Ms. Penny Morgan, and Ms. Andrea O'Hara. Uh, I just want to really a quick shout out to the board for doing a wonderful job and uh, continuing to support the children of the Crestwood community. Uh, we appreciate all you do. I know you know O'Hara enough, but uh, we truly appreciate you. We um, appreciate you more to see <laughs> that we're coming along. <laughs> Um, so I, I wanted to start off by, uh, I know you had a lot of questions just come up in a short period of time. Uh, what is it that exactly you want to see um, from our, our platform today? If there is any preference that you have, I'll make sure I cover it. I don't want to, I could spend hours on the platform, but I definitely want to use uh, your feedback in, in regards to what questions you may have. Um, can I start if you guys don't mind? I just want to give kudos to Dr. Masalam. This rigor, I loved it. You don't know how happy that made me to read that. So that's what I'd like to see. Where are we going with this rigor? How are we starting this process? What's it involved? You know, how are the students doing this? Um, what are the all the right I know. I, 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 I know because this was when I saw that you said that my I, my. I swear to God, my skin was just like, wow, you know, this is what I want to see. So this is so exciting to see what you guys are doing and to, to, to get the, the feedback from you guys so we understand the process and what to look for and where our students are going. So that's what I'd like to see. Any questions from other board members? No? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Awada. You're on. So I want to share, uh, share the screen and then take you right to the iReady platform. Um, some things to consider before I do that. Um, obviously, nothing replaces quality teacher instruction, and the iReady platform is not intended to do so. It does a few things for our students and our staff. Uh, number one, it's a great informational tool for our administrators and their school improvement teams. Uh, number two, it's a great monitoring tool um, for teachers, and it also is a great instructional resource for teachers and then it provides um, some excellent resources for parents. And most importantly, the, the whole, the nucleus of, of the iReady program is the learning path it develops for students based on what we call the iReady Diagnostic. The iReady Diagnostic is administered at the beginning, middle, and end of the year. And that's what teachers use to inform their instruction. But in addition to the teachers using that to inform their instruction, the students are always also given a learning path to practice on daily at a minimum of 45 minutes a week and um, complete lessons at the end of each of those, or quizzes at the end of each of those lessons to um, ascertain understanding. Uh, the iReady Diagnostic, it's a norm reference test. It's similar to the MSTEP, similar to NWEA. But again, it gives us that added layer of students having their own um, uh, learning path uh, customized to their needs. So it takes and looks at all the domains of reading and of math. In reading, it looks uh, at the phonics, the phonological awareness, the vocabulary, the high frequency words, the literary comprehension, and then the informational comprehension. Um, it's a great informational piece for uh, the teachers, again, to inform their instruction. Um, secondly, in math, it looks at every domain in math, the number and operations, the algebraic thinking, the measurement and data, and the geometry, and how each of our, our uh, cohorts are doing in each of those 
domains in each of the respected areas. So if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen and take you right to the platform and let you see what our administrators have access to, as well as our teachers and all the resources that are made available through iReady. Is that pretty clear to everyone? Pretty small. Small, yeah. Really small. Oh, boy. Um, Just put it in presentation mode. It should uh, get a lot bigger. Well, this is uh, this is right off the um, the website. Okay. I'm sorry. This is this is his, um, right, right his click bigot. roll. Right click roll on your mouse on the screen. Okay. Yeah, I, I did. I I've, tr I've tried this before. It just doesn't give you that option. It's That's sort right. of their server, so it doesn't let you play with it like you would. You have links to some of this data already embedded into that PowerPoint, which will be posted to the website as part of the program. Okay. He just wants to show you how the platform actually works. I just want to share and highlight some of the things that um, this provides for our, our staff. We have access to managing the platform, adding new teachers, adding different uh, rights. The assess and teach part is really what we want to look at and offering reports and so forth. But I know the board is interested to see. Um, so as Mr. Wad mentioned, the diagnostics administered at the beginning, again in the middle, and then again at the end of the year. We want to look for growth and typical growth is how much growth. We're not looking at grade level and, and students being on grade level, but how much they grow over one year. Um, this here gives you a, a good breakdown. I'm gonna start with reading. Uh, this is all schools. Um, so please don't be alarmed. There's some things that uh, have obviously impacted our students learning over the past few years, but this is great because we have now the information we need to, to focus our instruction at every grade level. As an entire district, um, what you're gonna see here is a comparison. The bottom being the fall, and then the mid-year being most recent. The, um, the red with the stripes, that indicates uh, students being three or more years behind in reading. Uh, students that are two or more years behind in reading are in the solid red, Students that are one year behind in reading are in the yellow. Uh, students at the grade level are in the green. And then the stripe with the green are students performing above grade level. Yes, yes. So I'm sorry, I can't see the uh, percentages, but what are you defining? I understand that some of them would not make um, grade level because of you know COVID and everything that's gone on. But what are you considering or measuring as a good percentage of growth for them? So as our, our, as our district, we've asked that all students meet their typical growth. Um, so with the fall diagnostic, fall assessment, uh, it the program itself identifies the typical growth that student should show over one year, one academic year. And we're looking to make sure that all of our students are meeting uh, that typical growth. There's another growth piece called stretch growth where students exceed that typical growth and go above and beyond their, uh, their typical growth. The one thing I want you to keep in mind is we want kids bunny, bunny jumping to the next level. That's really our aim and our goal. And we want these numbers in the three or more years behind to decrease <laughs> the two or more years behind to decrease, um, all these numbers to decrease, but we want the green areas to increase. And as you can see, uh, our students performing at or above grade level increased 6% and exceeding went from 8% to 16%. Oh, I see. Wow, you can see that? I'm sorry, I, I wish I could make it. No, no, that's okay. He, he just gave me the numbers, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, so as I, I spoke to the, each of the domains, they also have a comparison, this little line down here, it gives us a, you know, phonological awareness is really K-1-2, 
Um, it shows that we did a great job reducing the amount of students that were three years behind from uh, 3% to 1%. Um, we were at 9% for kids two or more years behind. Now we're at 6%. Um, for students, we went at grade level from 3 to 4%, and uh, now we have pretty much 88% uh, of our students have mastered that domain. Uh, going on to phonics, again, uh, same thing. We're seeing improvement across the board, uh, which is a testament to our teachers and, and all the support staff and, and rigorous instruction. Now, um, by no means do we want to say that that's the ceiling. We definitely want to continue to push for uh, greater growth and eliminate the red altogether and move to getting all the people in yellow to green and green to um, the stripes. We can see that our greatest need is comprehension of informational texts um, across the district and followed by comprehension in literature and then vocabulary. By grade level, uh, this second, may Ms. help. Uh, I'm sorry, ahead. go ahead, please interrupt any time. I just can't see you. Um, okay. Mr. Baidun, go ahead. So this is basically our new baseline. As we were talking about in December in our meeting, this is it. Yes, this is yes sir. This is the baseline we're, we're using. We also use WIDA data as well for our bilingual students. We also use the MSTEP uh, for our third through um, eighth grade students and the PSAT as well. Um, so we're, we're assembling a, an aggregate of data so we can use multiple sets of data. We always want to be looking at three pieces of data. iReady is one of those pieces. But what's so nice about the iReady platform is it does a majority of the work for the for the teachers where they're not having to spend an inordinate amount of time dissecting the data. They can look at the data, here's what the data is telling us, and then use that data to, uh, to, to create an action plan, now what? Now how do we respond to what the data is telling us? And concentrate their instruction accordingly. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So real quick, again, there's a comparison in reading for each grade, uh, grade kindergarten, uh, doing a phenomenal job. Um, and as you see, you know, the, the students that um, started the school year one year behind at pre-K, uh, that was significantly cut. You can see the percentage differences here from 79% to 44%. Students were 18% at uh, grade level. Now they're at 32%. And then again, the advanced students went from 3% to 24%. Similarly, you could take a look at kindergarten and uh, grade one, grade two, and grade three. Grades one, two, and three uh, are very in instrumental. And the read by third grade law is going to be in full effect. And we definitely have to uh, use this data to allocate our resources accordingly. Um, but again, the percentages show great growth. Again, this is just mid-year. We'll gladly come back at the end of the year and present the end of the year data so you have a better understanding of how many students in each subgroup met their typical growth, their stretch growth, or didn't meet their growth at all. Um, Hold on, I'm sorry, one second. Is there any way that that board can be brought up closer? No? Okay. Just, I'm just dying to see how yeah, it's. Okay. My eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that is. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is going to um, go off the page. Yeah, this okay. is going to be out of my screen Let's after. Right. Uh, Thank you. Thank is you. that okay? Is that better? That's yes. a, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Um, so again, uh, students in kindergarten, first grade, the red uh, is our identifies our, our bottom 30 students. Most definitely it helps teachers um, identify those students and again, plan for instruction. What this this easily does, um, it also goes, it breaks it down by all schools. Then I can go to a specific school 
then I can go to a specific teacher wow. and each of the teachers have access to these um, scores in the same context I'm showing them to you. Um, same difference if I pick a school, just going to randomly, uh, sorry, I'm just going to randomly choose a school. And uh, let's say Kinlock, for example, um, it gives you their breakdown. And um, from the fall diagnostic to the mid-year, you could see the growth over time, uh, which again is a testament to the teacher's hard work and, and the administrator's uh, leadership. Um, and then again, it then takes it and breaks it down to by teacher, so the administrators can use that data and have effective dialogue meetings and really talk about each student individually and how to um, create a plan of action for each individual student. That's awesome. Okay, and uh, so that was for reading. I'm gonna jump into math. It's the same exact thing uh, that you're looking at. This is the breakdown of our, um, of our district. And you see the improvement. We're at 13% of our students performing at three grade levels below. Uh, we reduced that to 4%. We were at 36% in the fall. We reduced that, that our performing two years below, we reduced that to 14%. Uh, we were at 41% in, uh, in the fall for our students one year below. And that went up to 60% because of the reductions in the two or more years and three or more years behind. So that increased significantly. Additionally, our students at grade level went from 8% to 14% at the grade level and then 3% to 8% in students performing above grade level. As we can see, it breaks it down by domain. So we can know as PLC teams uh, where we need to focus and where we need to pay more attention than elsewhere. Uh, measurement and data, geometry, uh, algebraic thinking, and number and operations remain. Mr. Awado, um, one, one second, please. Go ahead, Sue. Mr. Awado, was there one particular grade that stood out that seemed to have the biggest deficit in math and then in reading? And if so, what grade? Uh, great question, Vice President Kamensky. And it was um, our pandemic grades. Our, our second and our third grades uh, look to be in more of a need. Okay. And um, if you don't mind, I'll just take you to the... Um, oh, my apologies. No, I appreciate it. Sometimes it's easier just to start from the beginning. <laughs> um, so, so when you look at all schools um, and we do drop down to the grades, you can see our second grade and our third grades are the ones that are, are neediest. And sure, we can attribute it to the pandemic, but we're also seeing great growth right now in those, those two grades. Um, and again, this allows to, uh, the administrators to, to, to bring it down from whole school uh, to individual grade level teams, and then uh, to individual teachers, and then to individual students. And it gives all the data for them is they don't have to spend the hours and hours and hours that we used to do. Um, they can now analyze, spend the time analyzing the data and creating an action plan in response to that data. So you can also see our fifth, um, our fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, um, they were affected. But as if we do not address the deficiencies early on, you will see this with every data set, those will continue to get larger. The, 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 uh, it, that's why we really have to be specific with our intervention and our resources allocation to help these students at the bottom 30 um, move up to the next level. So and I then I, reading. I'm sorry, my question would be, this is our first set, right? So would you be able to um, hold on to this, these scores and then show us the difference at the end? Of the Absolutely. Okay. And it will show you from, again, the fall to the mid-year and then the fall to the end of the year. And we'll give you a complete report so you have a, 
You don't have to squint your eyes. You'll have it in front of you. So, again, uh, these are the reading scores. Um, and you can see the growth. Again, you can see second grade, third grade, uh, very needy grades. Um, but again, you jump to fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, uh, they too are, are, are needy. Um, do you have any questions? I have a comment. I just would yes. like to see the red go away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is our goal. Yes. Uh, and I think um, I'm going to turn it over. And real quick, before I turn it over to Mr. Fabris, in regards to the administrative team's response with curriculum and uh, professional development, I just also want to mention that um, the tools for instruction um, that teachers have available to them, um, you know, it gives them lesson plans for every single standard. These are the entire program is standard aligned. Uh, so nothing they use out of iReady is not going to be standards aligned. It gives them lesson plans for uh, phonics, phonological awareness, um, the, the vocabulary, the high frequency words. Most importantly, it gives them excellent lessons and videos that accompany those lessons for comprehension of informational text and literary text. That's awesome. Real quick, Mr. Uh, Sabah had a question. Uh, sure. You, you did say you were going to email these to us, right? Is that correct, Ms. Joy? So if I can, I can share the, the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I will actually download them and send them off. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, thank you so much, Mr. Awada. Sure. And Mr. Fabris is going to speak a little bit to the uh, response that we're coming up with as a leadership team and how we're going to use what we currently have to really um, create a better uh, a better future for our students and our parents as well uh, and our staff. Thank you, Mr. Wada. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, you know, it's it's exciting for me because when when I became um, principal at the at the high school, it was it was easy to see that we called ourselves a PLC, but we were not functioning as a PLC. And the first question of the PLC is, what do we want students to know? And that that is strictly focused on the standards that you are going to be teaching the students. And what was also easy to realize is that we weren't on the same page at grade level. At subject level, um, it, it was people were working in isolation. There wasn't a common agreement or a common consensus among teachers of what those standards were, what we wanted students to know. And the beautiful thing about having iReady, and thank you to you all, and, and, and we've got a piece of data to work with to start with that is aligned to standards that we are going to be supporting through the curriculum council work, through our PLC work, to establish that throughout the district at grade level, at subject, um, in subject areas, so that all teachers are teaching the same standards. And we are on a level playing field. And from there, we can, we can build. And it, 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 we've never had this before. So yes, as um, as you said earlier, this is, this is our baseline. It is our baseline. It is our point to grow from. And we are going to use this data and, and work with our teachers, the, the, the administrators, myself, Ms. Jawad, Ms. O'Hara. We're all going to work with our teachers and our build, at the building levels to, to make, this, make this count and to really help them understand how to use this data and how to um, get our students to achieve better. That is, that is the short of it. <clears throat> well, what I can say is this is really exciting for the district, and this has been like a dream finally uh, yeah. coming to fruition because, um, yeah, this has been something. Thank you, Dr. Masao. Thank you, Mr. Team. Awada, Mr. Yeah. Fabris, Ms. Jawad. You guys are really taking this head on, and uh, I can't wait to see the results. And I know that really? this, this data here is giving a, a, a large picture of, right. of what our data is across the grid, but this is going to be broken down into subgroups. It's going to be targeted to those that know what they're doing already, to those in the middle, to those that don't know what they're doing and need more help, 
to special ed, to ESL students. So there are a lot of subgroups that are gonna be impacted and, and once we get that work um, going, it's, you're gonna see um, real improvement. Let's go ahead and tell that. What's the timeline typically on graduating a kid, a, a student from that red zone? What, what kind of timeline do we typically look at? Is that only assessed annually? So we'll only know a year later or do they come out it of the red sooner than that? Quarterly, isn't it? Well, the good thing is, is we're going to be working with the teachers to use this data in their classrooms on a daily basis. And okay, as great. Mr. Wada had said, it's 45 minutes a week is what they recommend. So we're going to be targeting these students 45 minutes a week at least for these areas that they're deficient in. And, and hopefully the growth will come sooner than later. Um, the, the, the assessment is given three times a year. Okay. But, but within you know, the daily and weekly work of, of in the classroom, we should see growth much sooner than, than just yearly. Great. So re research shows that traditional growth is one year's growth every year. Okay. So if you're three years behind, you go to two, you go to two, you go to one, so on and so forth. As was mentioned, extended growth or stretch growth is a year and a half. Every student's in a different situation based on their current skill sets or what they're bringing in, as well as their supports at home. So what we, what the team is doing is when you look at that that three to two years behind, those students are getting the, are supposed to be, and we're working on implementing even further, individualized intervention and small group intervention. Uh, moreover, the key thing to this too, and I know they mentioned it, but I wanna reemphasize it, is where our cost-effective analysis comes into play, where we identify our professional development, the things that we need to do, where we need to put our money in order for the students to be successful. This is why we have the coaching positions. This is why we have the intervention positions. And then we're taking it a step further where, for example, at the middle school, they're, they're, they're redoing the entire schedule for next year so that there's more time for coaches to push in the classrooms and to focus on a lot of these groups. That's already happening in the elementary school. So this is part of that process. And the key thing Mr. Fabris and, and, and Zainab and, and Rodwin are doing is they're, and Andrea, they're talking with the teachers and the principals, identifying what professional development do they need? Where, where do you see it? And I will tell you in the conversation with the informative text, across the nation, Students that struggle in reading struggle on the informative text because informational text isn't, isn't, it isn't fun to read. But in all of the conversations with all of the different student, uh, the teachers, they've been talking about the informational text and how they wanna do more of it and have more writing, which is exactly where we need to go. The reason I asked too is not because I want you guys to like rush through all these kids, but I know that there's a lot of families that are struggling, struggling because their kids, um, didn't progress as well during the pandemic. And I know a, a lot of people are worried that their kids are stuck, right. um, you know, and, and they got no way of advancing. So I, this is great and bringing a lot of hope to those families. So in the, the event that you're testing, you know, at least three times a year, um, I, I think it's wonderful. It's a very, very good job. And it will follow the students all the way through. That's great. Hello, Chair. Yes, Ms. Kowals, go ahead. Um, Maybe too early to ask this, but at the end of the year, after they've taken their last quarterly iReady scores and you've done the comparisons, the ones that um, are still in red, do we have any plans to uh, maybe invite them specifically, those groups, into like a summer school type yes. of? Okay. They're already working on it with Ms. Morgan and Ms. O'Hara. They're putting it together. We're budgeting. It's already budgeted. Um, the schools submit their individual plans, and each individual school is going to handle those programs themselves. And that's all um, grade levels, or um... it'll be it'll be um, elementary through eight, um, and then high school is going to be more credit recovery. Okay. Did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, I understand that the younger kids are easier to coach and have them um, work in groups to try and catch up. Are we having a harder time with the high school kids or are they receptive to the extra attention um, to get them up to where they need to be? Yeah, that's a great question. And so the iReady test is really only a K-8 assessment. Okay. However, when we see that there are high school students that are that far below grade level, we realize that they need to come up. I think another factor to that is they get tested a lot. And you know, they a lot of them didn't take 
this round seriously, but we've had um, teachers and coaches working on the students at the high school level, um, talking about how important this is. And mm -hmm. it's the, one of the first responses that a lot of students had was, well, let me retake it. It's like, you're just gonna have to wait. You're gonna get a chance to retake it. Right. And then you can show us what you're gonna do. And, and, and all students really, they do wanna learn and they do wanna see their growth. I was meeting at Riverside today um, with some teachers and some of the first things you'll hear students say is, did I beat my last score when they, after they take okay. this assessment? So it's almost like that Nintendo effect. I wanna beat, beat the last uh, game that I had. Right. I wanna, get I to I wanna the do next better yeah. than I did the last time. So there, there is that, but um, I, I think you'll see a, a progressive uh, growth in, and, and much more, um, the, the students will take it much more seriously as, as we go on and they understand what it is. It's the first year we're using it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it'll grow as, as, as we move on with it. I have Thanks. a real quick question. I'm sorry. Um, are they able to access this at home where they can use it as support? You know, that's a better question for Mr. Owada. I believe yes, they, they can. Yeah. So, so President Berry, uh, each student, after they take the diagnostic, a learning path is created for them in accordance with their needs. If you recall, I talked to you about the domains in, in math, the number and operations, algebraic thinking, geometry, data and measurement. A lot of times what's happening, and this goes back to uh, Trustee El Zayat's question about growth and how quickly can a child, well, a lot of times it's one area that's really bringing that score down and really keeping that child down. And that's the great thing about iReady. It really, it's very specific to that child's needs. So, Anything they do on iReady Math will be specific to that child's needs, and that child will then have the lesson that they are given. And again, 45 minutes a week with a 70% or plus on the quiz that they receive at the end of the lesson. That's the recommended amount of time. And if we meet that threshold right there, and if the program works, which it does, uh, that by default will bring that student score up 10% without any additional anything else but then you add the teacher instruction and specific teacher instruction to where that child uh, child's needs and that individual and small group um, consulting that the teacher has with the students on a daily basis that's where you're really going to get the big bang for the buck but they all have after they take the diagnostic a learning path is created for every student and that student can access it at home. It's all through Clever, the single server option we use as our district. Um, and they can practice it at home. They practice it at school. Uh, the one thing we're really going to push hard for parents to make sure that they're meeting that 45 minutes a week and that they're completing those quizzes with a 70 percent uh, plus uh, proficiency. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Sajanu? Uh, my question was already answered. Thank you, Mr. Alada. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you so much. Nice job. We can't wait to see the results. So when are you coming back? Three months? Um, the window opens this in two weeks and doesn't uh, close until last year's school, so sometime at the end of June. Probably. Excellent. Most likely I can't August. Wait. Probably August. August. I don't want to see no red. No, <laughs> no, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Great thank job, you, guys. guys. Thank Great thank job. You. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else from the superintendent? Nothing from me, Madam Chair. So we can uh, move to adjourn? Yep. Okay, 649. Do I have a motion? Motion, Madam Motion to adjourn Support. by Mr. Uh, Beydoun, supported by Mr. Saba. Is there um, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.